Hi, this is Trevor with leatherwallets.org. In this series of videos, we're taking a look at leather money clip card holder wallets, just like this guy. This is the Viosi leather money clip card holder wallet. Um, and let's go ahead and get into it. So this is how it arrived. Um, I got this for $23.95 from Amazon, um, and this is how it came. Um, so this is, just to give you a reference, this is $1 more than the Muttback we re we reviewed in the last video, and you know, $14, $13 more than the Alpine Swiss we reviewed in the first video. All right, so let's take a look. Um, it comes in this white box, um, flimsy cheap box. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that, uh, but it does have a nicer cardboard box on the inside. Very slim um, with their logo. And this is this is good, this is a good box. Uh, I like how it displays the wallet. I So if you're gonna buy this uh, for someone, take it out of this box. Uh, leave it in this box and wrap it like that. Uh, you know, this looks nice, this doesn't. So, my advice there. All right, so let's see. We've got um, a couple of cards here. Uh, a note for the RFID blocking and a thank you card from VOC. All right, uh, so the packaging, it's, it's all right, not bad. Um, it depends on your preferences, uh, which you like better, the craft box versus the, um, this uh, kind of shiny black box. Uh, with the VOC, make sure you take it out of that white box. The mutt bag you can wrap as is. All right, uh, so here is the wallet. Um, it's got this interesting leather on it uh, it's top grain the on so this is interesting on Amazon it says top grain Kingston leather if you look uh, right there stamped it says genuine leather uh, so this brings up a good opportunity to talk about uh, leather quality. Um, so, here, let's do this. I've got a piece of leather here. Uh, imagine this came off the, uh, the height of the animal, right? Um, and you're looking to make a product with it. So, this leather here is full grain. Um, do you see how it has little marks, stretch marks, uh, you know, little, little faults with it in the leather? And this is how it comes from, you know, how it is on a cow. It, a cow has stretch marks. It gets uh, bit by uh, mosquitoes and, and ticks and hits barbed wire fence. And, you know, the skin isn't perfect when it comes off a cow. Sometimes they'll have big brands in it you know, so that that's full grain leather right there, right where it has all these imperfections, um, which is what you see here. And it's also uh, what you saw on the, the mutt back wallet here, okay? Full grain leather. Now, top grain leather is, they take full grain leather like this, and then they sand off the top, right? They wanna remove all of these uh, little imperfections that are found in the leather um, and then refinish it, okay? So it, it becomes a preference, really. Personally, I, I don't mind faults at all. I want the, you know, full grain. I don't want it to be sanded smooth. Uh, embossed with a, you know, a pattern, anything like that, give it to me raw, not raw, but give it to me full grain and I'll be happy. Top grain isn't bad though. So 
This says top grain leather, right? That's, it's not necessarily a step down from full grain. Um, it's preference. People may like, you know, other people like not having these visible marks in the leather, and that's fine. Now we get to this term, genuine leather that they have stamped onto the wallet. Genuine leather isn't a leather grade, it's a marketing term, right? Um, genuine leather came from marketers who, uh, let's go into one other type, uh, split leather, right? Split leather is a, a broad term for a, lar a lot of categories below top grain. So if we look at leather quality, top grain, full grain, and then depending on preferences, uh, full grain may be best. Split leather is when they take, um, and I'm gonna show you up, up on this, and I don't know if you can see it, um, but they take, and you see how thick this leather is? It wouldn't make uh, a real great, uh, wallet because as you folded it over and created pockets the wall would be super thick so uh, They split leather right uh, Take a knife and cut it right down down the center the part that falls off on the left will be the Top grain full grain right the top that the part that falls on the on the right will be the split leather so uh, You know you can use that to make suede for example uh, genuine leather also typically is from is uh, labeled as the part that comes off from the right. What is done with those scraps and, and some of the end pieces that aren't used for wallets is they grind those up, uh, make a real fine, and then uh, glue those together with polyurethane, vinyl, etc., uh, and let that dry, and that is leather right? Um, it's a split finished leather um, that can be stamped or embossed with a grain to make it look like, you know, a higher, higher quality leather. So top grain, so I was saying top grain, full grain um, are about the same as far as quality, right? Uh, depending on your preferences, you may prefer full grain like I do over top grain if you want a wallet that doesn't have blemishes, top grain may be the choice for you. Uh, but then we get to split, you know, split leather, uh, and that's absolutely, that's bad, right? So we're gonna rank any split leather as bad. Uh, genuine leather, as I was saying, genuine leather is a marketing term and was created by that crappy leather um, and marketers who wanted to sell that at a higher price, right? So they, they said genuine leather. Well, yeah, it's, it's absolutely genuine leather. It just has been reconstituted into this stuff. Um, so yeah, so I don't know why they would stamp genuine leather uh, on the wallet and then put in their listing and their description top grain. Um, uh, let's let's. It's it's hard to sometimes tell, but we're gonna we're gonna do our best to see which this is. All right. So that, enough about that. Um, the leather feels okay. Uh, feels feels a lot. Um, Feels all right. Has a like a, a baseball glove type feel to it more than um, say any of these other le leather. So it's a little bit rougher. Um, yeah, it's a little bit rougher than those other leather. Uh, personal preference here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but this finish just makes it look dirty. Um, it's hard to tell which is style, you know, like out, like the dark areas out here and which is dirt, like where this magnet meets. Um, 
It's a lot of discoloration on this guy. All right, um, so let's smell it. Has a strong leather smell to it. It smells pretty good. Yeah, it smells like a baseball glove. So that's good. Well, yeah, good points, uh, you know, that, that's definitely a plus. Let's talk about the pockets. So we've got an ID window here with a thumb hole. Um, we've got a large center pocket, just like we did in the uh, mud pack wallet. We've got uh, one large pocket here, and then three along here, uh, and then the magnet. The magnet feels very strong. So, so we're gonna test that. So let's start with the capacity of cards. Um, grab a bunch here. Feels good, a little, little tight. It feels just, just about perfect for how it should be uh, starting out. Large center pocket. Uh, I'm gonna put cards in there, but you could also put receipts or other things, um, and that feels fine. So this it doesn't look like they got it perfect, but it's all right. Uh, let's throw a card in there. We're gonna put one card per pocket, and then we'll come back. So here again, and I don't know if what they did here, but hopefully this top pocket has, you know, is sewn so that the car doesn't go all the way down. Let's try it out. Nope, feels like it stops right there. Okay, so that's good. Throw another guy here. Stops there. Okay, so we're getting pretty tight. if I can get that all the way down or if that's the end. Okay. So that last pocket's pretty tight. Um, right now we've got one, two, three, four. We've got five cards in there. We can go at least one more. Uh, let's put it behind the ID. Goes okay. Pretty tight. Uh, let's try... Oh, I don't know if I counted that center one. But let's try one more just to see if we can do it. going to be it. At least at first, um, you could probably fit uh, one or two more cards in there as, again, as the, the wallet stretches out a little bit. Uh, so we put in, uh, that's hard to get out, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cards. So the same amount, I believe that was the same amount that we got with the Mutt Back. Uh, two more than we got with the Alpine Swiss. 
Um, all right, yeah, so uh, let's check the cash capacity with this guy. So we will start out. Um, that wallet or that magnet felt pretty pretty good. So let's go ahead and start out with 14 bills. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That was pretty good. Let's add two more. There's 15, there's 16. Sixteen is good. All right, let's uh, let's bump this guy up to eighteen. Hi, Bobo. All right, so we got eighteen bills here. And that's going to be about it. One second here. Eighteen bills fills uh, about the max for this guy. Um, let's try. Let's go ahead and try. We'll jump it up to 20. Got two more. Twenty's good. I, I I wouldn't trust any more than twenty uh, on this guy. It still feels pretty strong, but crap. Let's let's try. Let's go up two more. So twenty-two. All right, this is a little bit too loose for me. I'm gonna say 20. 20 bills uh, is the max. 22 uh, is pushing it, and that's so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 bills in that guy. That's uh, quite a lot. So that's a big jump up from both of the previous wallets uh, we tested uh, for capacity. So let's uh, next let's try the scratch test. Um, we'll do it the same places. I'm... Uh, as before, let me get my 
uh, sandpaper. We got 150 grit. And we're just going to sand it right here uh, where the wallet has magnet. You can see the, the grain starting to show uh, like we did with the uh, mutt back. Much better than the Alpine Swiss. We got a little bit of color lightening. Um, and we're also clearing off this, you know, this dirt or look, this dark look, which is probably good. Uh, so not bad there. The uh, scratch test turned out good. Um, feels like there's cardboard in that. I just want to get a feel for uh, the thickness of the leather. It's a very thin. Um, and it feels like there's some other material in there. Uh, we're gonna have to dissect this in another video, see what it's made of. Uh, last but not least, let's do the RFID test uh, because this is RFID blocking. Um, so we've got a little meter there. Let's throw it in the ID window first. Looks good. Throw it in the center pocket. What? That is not supposed to. I don't know. Did I not have it all the way in? Wow. Interesting. So let's uh, get there. Oh, this magnet is causing something in there to rattle. So it was just this center pocket, and it and it's when I don't have it all the way in. Um, so if we push this card in until it lines up with the top, like that, it'll scan. And uh, so that's interesting. That did not happen with the mutt back. And let's uh, test that again. So we're gonna do it just so that matches the top. Like that, we got a little stick up. And nothing. So, RFID, why is it just that middle pocket too? Um, and not the ID window. Let's flip this guy over. And it seemed to only happen when I angled it. So again, match it to the top. Wow, so, all right, so we're gonna score this, uh, 
we're going to score the RFID protection as okay. Um, not as great as the Muttback or the Alpine Swiss for that matter. Uh, both of those did RFID protection much better. Um, so let's, just to show you, let's see how far in, so let's le leave it, I don't know, that far out. We get a scan, let's push it down a little bit further. We get a scan. So there's that much showing. We do not get a scan and that rattle is from something hitting the magnet. We've got uh, You can see this, like three, uh, I'm not coordinated enough to have you see everything, three millimeters of card sticking out of the wallet and the RFID is not catching it. Going back to the VOC, we're gonna have it flush. So you can see cards flush. And it freaking scans. Man, so interesting. All right, um, RFID. It protects in most pockets. Um, we, even this front ID, it, uh, it didn't scan. The middle pocket scanned. Uh, so I don't know what that's about. I have front ID pocket, it's fine. Middle pocket, the one you would think has the most protection, uh, doesn't, has the least. All right, so let's wrap up. That, that was a, uh, that was exciting. <laughs> the VLC wallet, uh, what do I give it? All right, start with the leather. Leather smells good. Uh, seems to be, you know, I, I, li I like the feel of it. Seems like a, a baseball glove, you know, a little bit rough, um, but leather feeling. It smells like leather, uh, which is great. Um, the, how they describe it is top grain. What's stamped on this wallet is genuine leather. I don't know where the disconnect is and that concerns me. Um, the color, uh, I don't like the color. That's gonna be preference. Uh, this looks dirty to me, like a wallet that just got grease and grime on it. Um, others, you know, you guys may like that. Uh, scratch test held up great. The magnet on it uh, was great. So 22 bills, I believe is where we stopped on that. 2022, something like that. Um, the number of cards uh, was adequate. So I believe we got the same number of cards that we did for the mutt back. Um, you do get an ID window on this where you don't get it on the mud back. Um, and yeah, so that's it. So uh, so overall, oh, the RFID, I, I have to mention that. So RFID protection, most pockets it did fine. This center pocket didn't. Uh, and I can't explain why. Um, once we take it apart, maybe we'll see what was causing that. Uh, so it's, it's gonna score lower on RFID protection than either the Alpine Swiss or the Muttback. And the leather is gonna score a little bit lower than the Muttback. Um, design is good. Uh, we didn't have any issues with the pockets like we did with Alpine Swiss. Um, yeah, so there you go. Check it out, the VOC Money Clip Card Holder Wallet. 
visit the website, leatherwallets.org, where you will see uh, our review of this wallet as well as the other five that we're doing. Uh, just a reminder, this one came in at 23.95, and we are doing wallets from 9.99 all the way up to 95. All right, so check in with the next video. Uh, the next video is going to be a Hanks belt leather. Uh, so that's this guy, this Hanks belt uh, wallet here. This is a made in USA option. Um, it's, you know, a little bit more expensive, uh, but we're gonna be taking a look at that in the next video. And uh, this was the VOC. Thanks so much. Goodbye.